Hello, my name is Ryan Wenzel. I'm the Technical Director at the Center for the Performing Arts at PVCC. And today I'd like to demonstrate to you some of the technology that we're leveraging to enhance the shows and events we're doing in the performing arts space. One of the uh, softwares that we're using is Mad Mapper. It's a 3D integrated projection mapping software where we can shoot a projection uh, or an image or whatever onto a surface of an object and wrap that image around it, uh, either creating a depth of field or making it flat. So you create a base layer and that base layer is your backstop for every uh, additional layer to stop from going beyond and that just gives us a good foundation. From there I went ahead and mapped the uh, frames if you will and it's about uh, eight different um, surfaces for each rectangle. We added another backstop in the frame to kind of give it another depth behind that and as you can see here this is what the entire mapping piece looks like. Now, as you notice below here, there's a little bit of convex and concaved edges to these rectangles. So as the projections advance, you'll see that some of them will pop and become uh, more 3D, and some of them will almost uh, uh, sink back in and become flat. Uh, behind me, there's no smoke and mirrors. This is all just a small projector. Uh, we usually do this on a larger scale. Most recently, we've um, used Mad Mapper on 26 Pebbles as well as the Beatles Tribute Rock Concert, uh, where we had um, anywhere from four to five projection surfaces about the size of a four by eight um, platform. So now moving forward, we're going to take some of our images and create a different um, scene. Uh, we've created a wooden backdrop with wooden frames and some nice uh, family photos. So what we could do with this projection is project it either rear or front onto one of our sets and not actually have to paint our sets, but using these projected images, create them in a three-dimensional space and then project them onto our set. So if we wanted to go with something more modern, like we talked about before, it's a nice little change. And it was just a little bit of time to find images that I wanted that um, fit well with the another and still kept the original backgrounds but say the director now wants those images to move. Well, this was easy enough. I found some uh, stock images that we were allowed to use that had movement in them and paused them at a certain point to give them kind of a nice static look. But when the time came, we're gonna press play and now the entire thing's gonna move. So let's go with something uh, more obscure, uh, more surreal. Uh, we just have one of our humans here with uh, glasses on and we just changed the elements from picture frames to glasses frames. If we wanted to add more of a obscure nature to it, we could take the surfaces that were on the glasses and create this kind of psychotropic, cool um, image here that moves and create a totally different feel with it with just a kind of a click of a mouse. Or we can go even further and break um, the image down to its most simple block forms and do something completely new. Or we can completely get rid of the entire surface as a whole and go back to just our base layer, which at 30 feet um, from the performing space, a lot of this background surface stuff will actually disappear uh, even though that there's multi layers onto it. Like I was talking about before, one of the recent shows we did was the Beatles Tribute Concert. At the start of the show, the feeling I wanted to have was that sense of familiarity of Abbey Road. However, the Beatles were absent because there were no performers on stage. So I had to figure out a way to find a image and Photoshop it with various different <laughs> images of Abbey Road and then Photoshop out the Beatles um, so that as the performers walked on stage, we were also able to um, bring the Beatles on stage, as you can see here. Once the first uh, piece of music started playing, we started on a journey um, that was unique to each individual song. And from each individual song, uh, every slide changed depending on uh, what actually fit the best and didn't take away from the show, it just added to it in a sense, um, kind of demonstrated by here. And finally, it can be something as simple as uh, an interior window looking externally. Um, maybe we just need a, a set piece that 
one of the characters is looking out the window and they need something that moves and, and it looks more interesting than just a, a painted piece and maybe some uh, light manipulation. Uh, we now have the ability to project and map some of these elements uh, to create a new experience and uh, move us more in the, in the 21st century of uh, technical theater. All right, well, thank you very much for your time. Uh, please stay tuned. I'll be doing more of these to show how sound uh, can actually affect these images and that we can play all of these at the same time without pressing a button at all, or we can be completely integrated and manipulate all these individual pieces as the show goes on. Well, thank you for your time.